Well, hey, folks. Welcome aboard the Jetty Wolf. You know, I mentioned the other day in one of my videos that I was going to sort of explain a rig that I've been using for well over 10 years. And I call it the strong arm. And what it is, it's a little rig, bottom rig that I developed. 100% I came up with it because I did it out of need. And it really has been working for me. Everything from bottom fishing offshore to bottom fishing in the river to bottom fishing in the intercoastal to wherever there's current and lots of structure that you can get hung on because you got to remember everything I do is pretty much based because I'm in the charter fishing business and I can have four people on the boat two of them can be little kids whatever and I need everything to kind of work a little smoother. So I came up with this and actually I just got back a little while ago. The boat is all clean and everything and I said to myself, since I'm up here messing around, let me show you the strong arm rig. It's for current and it's for being in structure. I'd be laughed off the dock if I was down there in South Florida. The reason we can get by with a lot of stuff that we get by with is because our water is dark. The fish can't see his own fin in front of his own eye. So we can get away with terminal tackle. All terminal tackle on the end of your line. You should think minimalist. The least amount of tackle the better. Number one, the less you're going to lose. And if you can use a rig that keeps you from losing a lot of terminal tackle, sinkers, hooks, whatever, the better. I showed a little bit about it but with a sheep's head hanging off it the other day. And I said, nothing fancy. Nothing fancy. Well, what I meant by that, it wasn't a jig head that I caught a sheep's head on. It wasn't one of the swing jigs that I caught a sheep's head on. It was my plain old bottom rig. You know, there's all this fancy shit. Even I do it. Look up here, see this here? This is my strong arm rig. It's got, uh, it's a way of holding the leader out. Okay. And, there, and um, I can put any sinker I want. So, all this fancy stuff, and what do I do? I take my plain old bottom rig, which I'm thinking about doing a video of how to build these, okay? Because there's a little bit of a secret about how to build the strong arm rig that has caught me everything under the sun in the last 10 years. But I take my plain old bottom rig, put on double fiddler, and I get I get old Mr. Sheep's head here. And here it is on one of my pride and joy rods and reels. This is my uh, Jigging Master Level Wind Lever Drag Wiki Jigging on uh, Ugly Stick Tiger Light Jigging Rod. I thought maybe this would be a good one to show you. Now, this is what I was showing you the other day. And of course, this has a much bigger hook. This, I got the, uh, the 4 aught True Turn on there with the cam action bend. Okay. From A to Z is a cross line three way swivel. Cross line meaning that it's like a T, it's not those three ways that are kind of star shaped it goes straight across with a hanger uh, position at the bottom then you've got a dual lock snap that's what I call them dual lock snap going to a, a length of mason 
hard type nylon leader material. Mason hard type nylon leader material. Notice the key word, nylon. This is a monofilament. That's this red Cajun stuff. Okay, this is 100% nylon. Look how stiff that is. And that's what makes it the strong arm. So I got a length of that, a crimp, then I'm going to a crimp here, making a loop, and I use a quality 50 to 70 pound swivel there, and then I tie on my leader. And when we put a sinker on here, and the reason being is I can change out weights real simple. I do it all the time. I do it all day long. Sometimes we're using a two, sometimes we're using a four, then all of a sudden we're using a six, sometimes we're using an eight. After eight, I give up. That's just too much current to be fishing in. So we tie off our line here, and then we put on a sinker. I've done a little research prior, and yeah, see, I spend the big money many times because I know it's going to last. The Mason hard-type nylon is expensive. If you think for a minute that fluorocarbon leader is expensive, which it is, this is about three times because it's pure nylon. Now, before we even get into all that, the reason this works, let me put my sinker back on here, is I'm going up and down. We're going up and down bottom fishing all day long, right? We're checking our bait, we're bringing it in, we're with a fish on, taking a fish off, baiting it back up, sending it back down. You notice how this is riding down, right? So when the sinker's dropping, this strong arm is stiff enough that as it goes down, hits the bottom, and I mean, you're dropping down 40 feet, that this doesn't get wrapped up like that. It does every once in a while, but not that often. It doesn't get wrapped up in your main line. Because if you just used one of the nylon sinker slides, which is terminal tackle heavy, let me tell you, swivels, sometimes people use beads, then you've got the nylon sinker slide that that breaks because you got caught in the bottom and your sinker's gone. Well, I'll tell you, most of the time with that being metal, we get stuck in the bottom. I'm pulling, the, I get the sinker out, okay? So as you can see, we're dropping down to the bottom, and this is providing a strong arm to keep the bait because not everybody puts their bait on hydrodynamically. So if I got somebody that's put the bait on where it's kind of spinning on the way down and all that, it's got a swivel, so you use a high-quality swivel down here, and this won't get tangled up in our main line. And then this sits on the bottom. All right, so you got your bait here, and everything in this red line right here is sacrificial because this is, I'm always going to use less strength than this. This 80-pound Mason hard-time nylon is not breaking. So we'll be able to, if we got stuck on the bottom, we'll be able to just break the hook off, tie on a new leader. Remember, everything's about fast, 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 fast. That's my strong arm. It holds the bait out, and at the same time, I can switch sinkers out quickly. It stores easily. It's not that much terminal tackle, but there is a little bit of a build list here of things you've got to have. And since the Mason is so expensive, I'm going to show you an alternative. It's not as perfect as Mason, hard type nylon, but it works. And I'm going to show you how many strong arms that I make and how many I keep on the boat. And I'll tell you, I make all these strong arms all winter long, and I don't really, I don't lose that many. So let me pull those out. All right, folks. <laughs> that is how many strong arms I keep on my boat.
I make them. I can make these in minutes. All right, that is, I'm going to take a wild guess, 150 of them. All right, but what I wanted to show you, okay, the Mason hard type nylon is going to be very expensive. I just priced it out. If you went to their website, Mason Fishing, I think it's MasonFishingTackle.com, and I'll do all the links and stuff in the video description. I think a hundred yard, or I think it's a hundred yard spool, little spool this big, of Mason hard type nylon, eighty, what they're calling eighty pound. It's like thirty two dollars or thirty five dollars. That's a lot for the average guy to go spend just to make a few rigs. Okay, I can understand that. It is clear, though. Okay, it's like fishing line. It's clear. There's another alternative. And I've got some here. And I use them, but I don't, I don't like them as much as the Mason hardtype nylon. That, you notice that's whitish. See the difference? Hopefully you can see it right up against my shirt. That's clear. This is white. Now you can get this in different colors. That is what they call cat gut. This is what you restring a tennis racket with. Now, this is also very stiff. Okay, it's very stiff. Is it as stiff as the Mason hard type nylon? No, it's not. I've, I've tested it. Um, but you can still make strong arms with it, and it still works in the way intended. Because, see? See how it's pointing down, and it's kind of stiff? It just isn't as stiff so maybe the deal is is just to shorten it a little bit because the, the shorter it is the stiffer it's going to be you're gonna need either the cat gut or the mason hard type nylon you're gonna need the cross lock size swivels you're gonna need the right size you're gonna need the right size do lock snaps and you're gonna need the right size crimps so none of this is just falling off of the truck it's all about investigation and doing some homework. I had to. I had to just to build the first couple that I did and then go out and use them. I had to buy a whole bunch of stuff just to see if it worked. So um, we're going to go into the wolf den and I'm going to break this down into how you make one. All right, folks. We're back in the wolf den here now at the workbench. And I just wanted to ask you. How many of y'all seen these things hanging from the high tension wires next to the bridge? Tourist rigs with the boom and the big heavy line and the uh, and this big stupid looking snap for putting your sinker on. People up on the bridge buying some tourist rigs and then slinging them out there so far that they're swinging from the uh, power lines or the telephone lines next to a bridge. I keep that one handy just so I can make fun of it. The other thing that a lot of people use is the nylon sinker slides. I'm not going to go into the rigging of these. These have their merits. I don't mind using these in the surf. I used to be a big user of these. Again, too much rigging. Well, I was telling you about the Mason hard type nylon. Here's how I bought mine. This is 80 pound Mason hard type nylon. And probably 10, 15 years ago, this spool right here was, a, was over $100. I have 30 and I have what they call 80. And they're really just go, going by diameter. This stuff is way stronger than 80 pound, I think. It is the most abrasion resistant stuff I've ever used. Here's what you're going to need to make this strong arm. I'm gonna, this is the parts list. You're going to need about a 50 
to 60 pound swivel, a quality swivel, you're going to need a number four, that's what I like right here, cross lock or cross line three-way barrel swivel. That's a barrel swivel. And there is other, other ones called rolling three-way swivels, but they're shorter. The length of this is perfect. All right, and that is, like I said, that is a number four. Then you got your dual lock snap. Reason they call them dual lock snap is there and there. It dual or duo locks. All right, and that is my preferred size, which is a number five. Then you're going to need crimps. And I'm steering this right now towards using this material for, uh, you know, restringing tennis rackets. And I believe that is a double, well, I know that is a double barrel swivel, meaning it has two holes, not one. It looks like the end of a double barrel shotgun. And I believe for this that I'm using right here, it's a 1.3 millimeter. So you're gonna need a bunch of those. Like I said, you can by all means get 80 pound mason, but that like 100 yards is gonna cost you, you know, 30, $40 by the time there's shipping and everything involved, okay? Unless you are hardcore, you might not wanna spend that much money but you can sort of get by making these. And all, like I said, the difference is, is you just make these a little shorter so they're a little stiffer versus when they're long, it's not as stiff feeling. You're gonna need some cutters. I got these little cheapy uh, KVD, Kevin Van Dam, Mustad. All right, then you're gonna need a pair of small hand crimpers. And this is the type of crimpers you want. These are the kind of crimpers you don't want to really use. You don't wanna use these. These aren't really the proper crimpers, these are. So let's get at it real quick here and let's make you into a strong arm producer. I think you can see the black better. All right, let's go with the black. The black, not that stiff either. I really, really recommend this because it's nylon. This, the entire thing is based on the stiffness of this to be your strong arm. So here's how you do it. Actually, let me switch hands because I always do everything the same way. You're going to go through your swivel and out the other end over here. Then you're going to take this end and you're going to oppose it and you're going to bring it in and you're going to squeeze it. You're not going to cinch down on it. You're going to let it lay sort of naturally in there like that. Okay. See the way it is. If I let it go, it's just going to pop off. That's how you do it. I squeeze it. You're going to take a crimp and put it on the other end. Slide her on down. Then you're going to take the double barrel and you're going to run the second one in that you're holding. You're going to, I'm trying to look through the viewfinder and I can't do it looking through the viewfinder. Okay, so let me look around the camera here. It's not hard. It's only a GoPro Hero 5. That's mighty small. So, you're going to slide this up. And pinch it. And you're going to leave a space here. See right here? I'm hoping everybody can see that. You're going to leave a little space. You're not running that down, that crimp straight down on there. No stressing the materials. 
all right about there then you're going to take your crimpers and i don't know if you know how to crimp right but you crimp like this you're not crimping flat you're not using the notches in here to go between the double barrels you're going to go at one end get it in there i'm going to make sure you're going to go at one end and you're going to crimp all right there you go you're going to go on the other end and you're going to crimp these things are so wore out so there you go that's making a proper crimp then you're going to go in and you're going to trim off this access or excess all right so there you go look at that you've got this strong arm right here right so the next thing is you're going to take your other crimp and i'm making this one short so hopefully it's a little stiffer and you're going to bring that over you're going to put on your swivel and you're going to make a loop so you're going to poke that out just a hair all right and you're going to go in and you're going to crimp that end okay and then you're going to crimp on the other end so there now you're going to go over and you're going to open up your do lock and you're going to put it on this end right here close her up and guess what you just made you made yourself a strong arm but as I said, serious disclaimer, I've got this because I wanted to try it because it's dirt cheap. You go to Academy, you go to the tennis racket department or something, and you can, you know, you can uh, buy this stuff cheap. Unlike the Mason. See? If this is where you're tying off, your sinker's there, and you're putting on a short leader here, this is going to give you some resistance, but I'm telling you, it doesn't do as well as the mason. I can't reiterate that enough. So that's how you make it. Right there. That's the strong arm. The whole idea is for this to hold your leader away. We could get into all kinds of particulars of where to find all this material. I get most of it on eBay. Um, through trial and error, have I found what sizes? Like I said, the cross line swivel I use is a barrel type. It's the ones that have the twisted wire. Barrel type, it's a number four cross line. The snap is a number five Dulock. I'm using about 50 pound quality swivels, not a little cheap piece of crap. I want to use quality swivels on the business end here, folks. And anywhere from on my Mason, I believe I can get away with a 1.0 millimeter uh, double barrel crimp. But on anything a little bit thicker like this, it's thicker but not as, as, as stiff. It's a 1.3 millimeter uh, double barrel crimp. So that is the strong arm that I promised I would show you. And these are the components that you need right here. Crimps swivels snaps cross line barrel three ways i cannot believe i just gave this away to tell you the truth